And we are live. Happy Halloween, mystery and thriller fans. I'm your on-air host, Sarah DeVello, and I am so excited to close out our Halloween extravaganza with Erin E. Adams, here to give us the inside scoop on her brand new red hot book, Jackal. Erin, welcome to Mystery and Thriller Mavens. Tell us about this book. Hi, uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, so Jackal is my debut novel. It is about a young black woman named Liz who returns to her hometown in the Rust Belt after many, many years away for many different reasons. But <laughs> her best friend's gonna get married, so she's gonna tough it out for like 36 hours, boom, boom, in and out, that's it. Uh, at the ceremony, her best friend's young daughter, Caroline, vanishes. She goes missing. Liz and everyone in the town starts this massive search for the girl. And as things are uncovered, Liz realizes that there's a series of missing children in her hometown and they're all girls, they're all black and something has been, it's been going on for at least generations. So now she has to figure out what in the world is going on before it's too late. Well, just like that, you hooked us good, and we're going to get into <laughs> all the delicious details because um, we've got a lot to talk about. we got a lot to talk about. Um, so first, I just want to welcome everyone. We are broadcasting live to seven destinations across Facebook and YouTube. So no matter where you're watching from, you're in the right place. This is the right time, and it is the Mystery and Thorough Mavens Halloween extravaganza. We're going to get on into it. I got one more surprise and prize to give away today, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you have been here before, you know the drill, and if you're new, we're so happy you're here. Welcome. Here's how it works. Every Monday for hashtag Mystery Monday, because you know Mondays can be murder. I give you my hand-picked featured authors, and you get to ask them anything. So ask Erin about her acting background, how it informs her writing. She's working on book two, what she learned, where did the story come from, why this book, why now, what's her creative process. We got a lot to talk about. And as you can see, I am in costume. I am a flapper girl detective here to investigate all the best mystery fiction. So we are going to get into it. Um, type your questions in the comments. I'll get them right over to Erin. Chelsea, welcome to the conversation saying hello, everyone. Sherry, welcome to the conversation saying congratulations on your debut book. So Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> For those who are um, fans of the show, Aline Cogdell was on last week, sorry, two weeks ago, and she picked Jackal as one of her favorite books of the year. She's a reviewer for Publishers Weekly, Shelf Awareness, and The Sun Sentinel. Congratulations on on that, Erin. And, um, and And Aline is not the only one who is raving. So let's get into some of the amazing praise that your book has excuse me, has earned. Um, I'm going to pop them all up on the screen so we can read them together. And then we can- Oh, wow. <laughs> you were like, I was not prepared for this. <laughs> it's okay, a nice that's- surprise. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're here for, Halloween surprise. Okay, let's kick off with, um, and then Sherry, I'm going to get right to your question right there. So with Paul Tremblay, who deemed this a heady, page-turning, all-too-relevant reinvention of the return to home horror story, truly gut-wrenching and frightening. So first of all, congratulations on that amazing review from Mr. Tremblay. Um, Aaron, what do you think the secret is to writing something that is truly gut-wrenching and frightening? Because it's actually hard to write fear without yeah. being corny, without, you know, it's hard to write. Yeah. What have you yeah. learned? What do you know? Um, something that I, I use a lot in my writing, especially when I get stuck, and I think that's why the horror elements work um, in Jackal, is to remember that all of your characters are people uh, with, with bodies, <laughs> and that their bodies at any given time are going to be going through something. So for example, if I get stuck in a scene, I'll always drop back in and be like, how does my protagonist feel right now? Like, is she cold? Is she sweating? How do her hands feel? How, what does she smell? How does she feel about the smell? And kind of makes gets it back into the body, into the visceral, and then usually from there, oof, you can get right back into it. Do you think that that's because we all know how it feels to be scared? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think it's that we know what it feels like to be scared and that uh, even if we experience the manifestations of fear, like the, the maybe not, manifest, maybe if we, 
other way around, sorry. Even if we are triggered by fears differently, the manifestations can be similar across the board. And so we know uh, when someone's, you know, even, you know, we might not be afraid of the woods, but if our character goes in there and her throat dries up and her hands get clammy, like we know what's going on. <laughs> and do you think that, that your background as a trained actor has played into that? Do you, is that sounds like almost like a stage technique, even though I don't know squat about acting. Um, yeah, definitely. It is definitely something that I've learned to do as an actor. Um, it's something where your, 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 your body is your instrument. So like, if you're feeling out of it in a scene, or I would use this, uh, kind of feeling of like, you know, like, um, acting from where you are that day, especially when it comes to auditions. Like Ooh. if, yeah, it was, it was like to totally game changing for me. So for example, like, let's say that I have an audition at like nine o'clock in the morning and I had to get up at seven in order to get ready and like get down to the place for casting. And like, I'm really tired. And I'm just like, you know what? Just do it tired, do the scene tired. It's like, once you allow yourself to be where you are, you get out of it. It's like, you know, you do Ooh. your first couple beats. You're like, okay, this, this character is tired. Like I'm tired. And then you move then you know usually the circumstances or what's going on in the scene will kind of pull you out of it because you stopped fighting that feeling so much Ooh, that's so fascinating so even if the scene is not a tired person even if it's like a perky cheerleader you're gonna play it as a tired perky cheerleader there yeah at least for the first beat or two which is also just interesting because you know everyone's come in there and like just trying to turn on per se and if you're just going to be present it's like, how does a really perky person be tired? And that already is far more interesting to watch than somebody trying to be, you know, perky and happy. <laughs> like, oh my God, that's really interesting, Erin. I've never heard that. I'm really fascinated to hear that. Um, thank you for sharing. Um, okay. Um, ooh, this is good. We got some good comments coming in and we're going to get to all of them. Okay. First of all, Sherry wants to know where did this title come from? So let's talk about, and, for, and this gorgeous cover. So let's talk about Jackal. Tell us the story of this cover. I'm oh, sorry, the, yeah. of the title. Yes. So the title, uh, came from, it kind of it really came organically as I was writing and some of it, yes, is a bit thematic and spoilery, so I can't share too much about it. But the non-spoiler the non part of it is um, coming from the Rust Belt, everything, there's this, um, not idea, but a very real uh, reality of scarcity. And you can feel like everyone's fighting for scraps sometimes, just like, you know, a, like a jackal, like a beast that eats carrion flesh. And then why I chose specifically a jackal uh, is like a jackal is like an African canine. And you're like, okay, so why is that in the Rust Belt? And I just wanted that, you know, discrepancy to be like, well, this is interesting. So that's, yeah, that's where the title came from. That is, Sherry, thank you for that great question. Yeah, thank you. Give us this <laughs> juicy answer because, um, as someone who's from Philadelphia, like as a Philly girl, um, so the opposite end of the state, um, I've I've noticed that the that the sense of that first of all, a sense of scarcity pervades and feeds and fuels fear, and the idea that there's not enough for everybody yeah. um, it drives a lot of different behaviors in a lot of different scenes, including politically, including the business world, including professionally and personally. This idea mm -hmm. that there's only the, the there's not enough, and we've mm -hmm. got to fight over these scraps. So that I love knowing that that essence is what fueled this creation of this entire story and the title. Yes, absolutely. Sherry, thank you. Um, okay, I want to get over now to um, – ooh, ooh, Sherry, great follow-up question. I'm going to hop over to, Li to Linda, then I'm going to go right back to you. Linda saying, mm -hmm. describing fear fears certainly makes it feel real for readers. Um, mm -hmm. Erin, when you're – what's the scariest book you've read? What has felt real scary to you? Oh. The book that I had – so uh, when it comes to books, I'm actually not that easy to scare – um, movies totally different. Every any scary movie I got to watch in the middle of the day with all the lights on. Uh, but the last book that I read that really I had to stop reading it at night um, was House of Leaves. House of Leaves just got to me, <laughs> man. It is like a book within a book within a book. It oh yeah, that was oof. That was very very scary. What what do you think that that author did effectively to to scare the bejesus out of you? Yes. So what they always <laughs> done so effectively was it's um, 
the so when I say a book within a book, it's the main manuscript is a first person recounting uh, watching a really creepy documentary. And so we're already like, we're watching this really weird documentary through an extremely unreliable narrator. But then there's all these footnotes that come in from the author, the unnamed author coming in and saying, okay, well, this is where this person is lying. Or this is where we don't quite know what happened. Or this is, or like, you know, halfway through you find out that um, we don't know if the documentary exists at all. And it's just like, and the idea is that the person who watched this documentary and then wrote this account like went mad and you yourself feel like you're going mad as you're reading the book. Yeah, House of Leaves. That is terrifying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm really scared just hearing about it. Yeah. Um, Linda, thank you for the great comment. Sherry, back to you. She wants to know, this is such a great question. What is the most <laughs> memorable question, Erin, that you have ever been asked, either good or bad? Love that. I've never heard that one before. Oh, man. Now I'm thinking. I was like, what? Sherry's got a stump. Oh, okay. It was, it was be like, what's the most memorable currently? Oh, this was fun, though. Here's a fun question I think that I wasn't expecting. Uh, for, um, uh, like, fall season, somebody asked me whether I was um, team pumpkin spice or team apple crisp. And I had like never really, I didn't know there were teams, A, and B, I was like, obviously pumpkin spice. What is, what is this apple nonsense? <laughs> that was my reaction to it. Okay. So I'm embarrassed to say I've never had a pumpkin spice anything. Is that a coffee? What is it's, that? So it's like, it's, it's just a bunch of fall spices, like nutmeg and cinnamon. And like, it's, it's, it's the, the spice that you would put into a pumpkin pie, but because, you know, we love maximalism, it's in everything now. It's in lattes, it's in scones, it's in like beef patties, it's in like the amount of pumpkin spice that is a, like out in the world right now is embarrassing, but most of it is delicious. But I will admit I'm a person that if it has pumpkin spice, I will probably try it, even if it probably should not have pumpkin spice. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm loving this. So I realize now it's because I'm a summer girl. So I've seen this whole thing, Pamela Pumpkin and Sally Summer. I'm team Sally Summer. I will, okay. I'm living in the wrong climate. I need to be living in some like tropical warm place where it is summer all year round. Um, so I resist and resent the fall. I do not project me into that good season. So that is probably why I don't have the pumpkin spice. But now I'm going to go have a pumpkin spice because you said it's your favorite, Ernst. And I'm like, not a no, I got to know what you like. I got to see what all the yes. hype is about. Um. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Anisa Joy, welcome back. Welcome to the conversation. So, Anisa's an amazing bookstagrammer and librarian. There she is with Wanda Morris. Um, oh, yay. We were just talking about um, Anisa was on the event with Wanda and then went to meet her at her in person event. Anisa, thanks for hopping on. Um, she wants to know let's deep dive a little more into the cover. Was this the first cover that you were given? Let's, let's hear the story of the cover because it's so arresting. Yes. It's so beautiful. It's, I mean, it's just. It's incredible. Um, so the story of the cover, uh, pretty early on, they asked me to send over like just images. And I am I am a Pinterest girly. So I had like a Pinterest board, like 99 pins deep of just <laughs> images. <laughs> and so I sent that over. Um, and then they asked me a couple of follow-up questions, like, you know, if we go with a person on the cover, what is that, you know, what does that person look like? Uh, if we don't, what are, you know, some more uh, specific thematic things that you want? And I answered those questions. And then uh, they sent me about, I think it was either four, no more than four or five covers. And this one, I remember because this was the last one in that batch and it like took my breath away. <laughs> Like, and the other covers were really, they, yeah. were, they were quite good, but this, that one was like, no, that's it, that's it. And what you see, like, this, this is really, like, this was draft one. Like, it didn't really change. Yeah. So, so this was, so, so this was one of five choices, but it was not a close call. It was this. Yeah, it was this by a yeah. life <laughs> Because it is arresting. It is, mm -hmm. it, re it, it is breathtaking. You stop yeah. and you're like, oh. It's, I mean, it's so beautiful and so noteworthy. I love this cover. Anissa, thank you for the great question. Yes. And 
Erin, thank you for the backstory. Renee, yes. welcome. She's saying hi from South Florida. Oh my gosh, look at that hey. cute little smushy puppy oh, thing. Oh, that is a cute bear. Oh. I want to cuddle that puppy right now. <laughs> um, oh, 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 Anissa, I like this question. She wants to know what is the strangest thing that you have been asked to sign in a book <laughs> to a fan? Uh, <laughs> I was um I'm trying to think. I it was the strangest thing I've been asked to put into a book. Uh, so a lot, I will say this, like um, a lot, uh, I just had a signing event in my hometown. And so okay. I had like a lot of like, you know, friends and family uh, coming out to have me sign stuff. And like, people would ask me to write like, what's your most memorable thing about me? And I'm thinking back and I'm like, I've known you like, I'm like, you're my mother's friend who I know as a teenager. So um it for oh one person yeah i'm like so stressful i know so i think for one person's book i wrote down like um thank you for taking me to school when i missed the bus um, <laughs> which is a true very true statement in a lot of things um and then uh, somebody was like please write me a letter giving me all the credit for inspiring this book even though i have done none of this <laughs> And so <laughs> I basically wrote that. I was like, thank you for all this stuff that you did not do, but thank you. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Well, um, that actually seems like a perfect segue for, um, so Erin is our closing act for our Halloween extravaganza. Um, I promised y'all prizes and surprises so let's get to a surprise and our final prize of the day so how about this i will buy the winner a copy of aaron's book and i will send aaron a book plate and aaron will you inscribe it with some weird funny message absolutely i will, I will just i'm trying to think no i will i will take my time and really think of something very weird and exciting. <laughs> very weird and exciting. So, okay, the winner gets a very weird and exciting. You heard it here on Mystery and Thriller Mavis Verse. The winner gets a quote, weird and exciting message personalized from Erin E. Adams inside a signed copy of Jackal, her brand new book. Um, or if you if the winner want has a weird, exciting idea oh, of yeah. their own, you can request that. How about that, fam? Let's end yeah. on a freaking crazy note let's just do it up let's do it up <laughs> connie welcome to the conversation <laughs> nice to see you she says definitely team summer there here thank you connie <laughs> we're all these fall girls out here with their pumpkin Aww. spice and their sweater weather what's so great about a sweater is it a magical yeah. sweater that takes me someplace warm <laughs> like, it's I don't comfy. A sweater. they're so cozy it's cozy you know what's cozy? A tank top and a soft shirt. <laughs> okay. I just don't like sweating. That's the one thing about summer is the, the humidity. <laughs> the humidity is not my friend. Yeah. Sweating and cleansing your skin. It feels good. I'm sweating too. <laughs> Linda, Linda, welcome. She says she's not a pumpkin spice fan either. Okay. So at least I'm not the only Fine. one. Thank you. I'm amongst, I'm amongst uh, f family here. Um, Renee says time to move to South Florida. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm packing my tiny bags. Um, oh, Renee is saying she loves the cover too. Oh, thank um, you. Oh, Anissa is saying she meant fa fan, not fam. Yes, yes. I knew what she meant, Anissa. Thank you. She said it's just so gorgeous. Absolutely. So, so breathtaking. Um, Renee saying, wow. Oh, she wants to know, Erin, what's your favorite Halloween costume? Um, so I, <laughs> interesting, uh, thinking about this for the last few days. Uh, I like when I do dress up for Halloween, I like to um, go as everyday objects. Uh, so what's so that? Just like things like 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 a spatula or like a pair of scissors. Uh, but one day one my favorite is one year I went as a faucet. <laughs> I just dressed head to toe in silver and then put a faucet on my forehead like a unicorn. <laughs> it was my favorite. <laughs> wow. Oh my god, that must take some real like finagling though to be I, I wouldn't know how to be a spatula or a faucet. <laughs> oh, Renee's saying that is so cool. Um, I love that you are, I wouldn't, I, I love that you are everyday objects. That's so, so fun. Yes. 
Okay. Um, you guys keep those questions coming. Oh, and I want to, I want to share how the winner can win this copy of the, of this, of this weird, exciting thing. So everybody, we are going live to seven different locations. So that's too much for me to check, I think. So if you could hop over to the Mystery and Thriller, Thriller Mavens Facebook group and comment on this video that I'm broadcasting in there. So I could look at all the comments in one place. That would be super helpful for, for me. So just go on over there and comment under Erin's interview video. Um, uh, and, um, what your favorite costume, what your favorite costume is, and I will pick a winner tomorrow. Um, Erin, let's get back to some of the fabulous praise that your book has earned. Um, let's head, hop over to Alma Katsu, who I absolutely love, who has been on the show as well. Um, former CIA analyst, Alma yes. Katsu. Um, ass kicker extraordinaire. And she says, um, real horror surrounds us in plain sight, nestled in the hearts of fiends who hide behind the barest of masks. Um, Erin E. Adams takes you on a breathless ride with Jackal, revealing the courage that it takes to stand up to monsters. Alma knows a thing or two about horror. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Um, so congratulations on that fabulous praise. Thank you. Um, from her. And I want to keep going as well. Sharing now from Megan Giddings, author of Women, uh, uh, sorry, The Women Could Fly. Mm -hmm. And I want to pop that one up on the screen next. And then I'm going to get to these other comments. She says, a thrilling blend of detective story, turn all the lights on in, a, in your house while reading horror and social commentary about how often women of color, especially black women, go missing and get little attention. It's an impressive and thoughtful debut. So yeah, let's talk about that. So um, first of all, in the United States in 2022, we still have a 30% unsolved rate for murders. Yeah. And in cities and areas where the population is predominantly people of color, like Houston, that number skyrockets to up to 50%. We know that missing and murdered women of color and um, black girls and women get less media attention and have a less likely, um, less likely to be solved rate. So you are taking a, a not, you have created a novel based on some real facts. Was that something that you set out to do? Do you want to, or, or that just, you learned, did you learn that and want to draw attention to it? Walk us through that. Yeah. So I, Jackal started as like I, in my attempt to kind of to make an urban legend and or like some folklore and I, what I especially love about urban legends is how they come out of usually a community dealing with a massive tra massively tragic event and it's how they cope it's how they try to explain the unexplainable. And so thinking about that, when it comes to missing and murdered, like especially missing and murdered black women, I'm like, yeah, I want something to attempt to explain the unexplainable and to gradually over, over the course of the novel, like reveal a bit of the systemic failures and a bit of like, you know, who the real life monsters are and then who the supernatural monsters <laughs> could be. So yeah, it is something that I knew I wanted to work with and write about from the very beginning. I love that. I love that. When um, when I had Tamron Hall on for her debut book last year, she shared that her novel, which is about the murder of two young black women, is actually two young black children, um, girls, were were based on her career as a reporter, um, which were also two murders that she had covered. Um, so I love when novels and stories, immersive stories on the page, are based on on real real facts, real problems, real issues that exist in our world. And, and you're addressing them in, in, in your story. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that. What issues are you taking on in your next book? If you're comfortable to share. Yeah. So uh, book two is going into the more domestic suspense, domestic horror category. So very much the calls are coming from inside the house, so to speak. And so they're dealing with the more, I would say, the more like intimate uh, issues of identity. Uh, and especially when it comes to it's dealing with um, a family that's immigrated to the United States from Haiti. And basically what it boils down to is what have they given up to become American? Like what do you gain by becoming American and what do you lose by, mm. coming, by becoming American? 
Mm, I love that. Now, um, were you able to draw on your own um, knowledge of Haitian culture and 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 to to infuse that truth into the page? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's been really interesting. Uh, Jackal was kind of like my well, not kind of. It was totally a bit of a research project into my own, my hometown. And it, through that research, I uncovered some stuff that I didn't even know from growing up there. Uh, and this book has been more of a research into I don't like. Uh, it, not into my own family per se, but into families like mine. Mm. Uh, and that's been really fascinating and interesting. Um, yeah, but a lot of it is based on like, you know, drawing from some of my experiences, some of my family's experiences, um, all of that. Yeah. I love that. Um, again, because it's just so much richer when it when it's drawn from the author's personal experience, <clears throat> excuse me, Renee saying your next book sounds incredible too. Absolutely. Oh, right. Thank you so much. I hope so. It's like, I hope. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I want to get over to this review. Vicious, sharp, inventive. Jackal grabbed me by the throat. I see what she did there and wouldn't <laughs> let go. Erin Adams lures readers deep into the woods with electric prose and then cuts through the dark with a monstrous and haunting tale. Deb Rogers, author of Florida Woman. Um, congratulations on that review. Y'all, I want to remind you that the book is out and you yes. can grab a copy right here from our favorite woman owned bookstore murder by the book <clears throat> so no matter where you're watching from you can click i'll pop the link up so we can all see it together you can um order now and enjoy get your copy of this beautiful cover this fabulous book um here is the link i'm going to pop it up so we can all see it together um here it is so oh, click and order. Yay. Um, Renee saying, what a fab and what amazing review there from oh. Deb Rogers. Renee, your fellow Florida woman there. Um, <laughs> Linda saying, so intriguing that your own life experiences drive your writing. Yes. So did you know that you wanted to mine these experiences and infuse them into it? Or did you realize you wanted to be a writer early on? Or it's only now coming to the career later in life that you're like, oh, actually, I do have some stuff I'd like to draw on. Um, like a bit of both. It's, it's very, this is a very interesting uh, turn that's happening in my life because mm. I have always written, like I've, I've always written my first degree is in literary arts, like, and, but it's something that I always did for myself and was very personal. And for, for years, uh, certain, a lot like professors and, and friends and writers groups been like, you need to, you know, get your stuff out there. And I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know. I just feel, you know, I feel like, oh, I don't know. Um, and like, as I sort of made the turn to be like, no, I think I want to try, you know, being a writer. Um, it, I realized that I, I was really afraid of it for a while. I was afraid mm -hmm. of taking on the title of writer. For, in some ways it was easier being an actor. I don't know what that says about me, but <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, I, but now that I'm here, I'm very, very, I'm very much enjoying it. And I think, I know, I know one of the big pushes that like helped me start to get my stuff out there is I just really, I've, and I always want to write, you know, the books that I, either don't see in the world or don't see enough of in the world. And I'm like, I just want, I just want more. I just want more, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Because everyone deserves to see themselves on the page, on the stage, on the screen, on the billboard, the big screen, the little screen, the golden screen, the silver screen. Yeah. And everybody deserves to see their, their stories and people who look like them and, and, and people who, who share their stories and 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 people who don't share their stories so you have a chance to walk in other shoes. And that's, yeah. I think, the best part of writing and reading. Mm -hmm. um, I totally relate with what you were saying. You know, I, I still struggle to say I'm a writer. It feels so brave and bold and vulnerable and terrifying yes. and all of those things. And what's interesting to me is that you – I thought all this time it was because when you enter a creative career – that is also a highly competitive career that it's that's why it's hard but now i'm questioning that because you were all in a equally if not more competitive career of actor and it still felt hard to you to say writer why do you think that is well i would say at least i mean again there's ample time for this opinion of mine to change uh but i find that i don't know i feel like there's just 
like I find a little, I mean, a little less com competition when it comes to writing because you're always, the, your, your biggest competition is yourself. Like it's, Ooh. yeah, it's like you have to do, you know, it's like looking in you know, whether the, the infamous, you know, book two mountain is like, you have to, you know, what, who you're in competition with most directly at that point is yourself. Um, and I find that really, uh, you know, it's, it, it's refreshing because I feel like in acting so much, it's like, oh, you're like so-and-so and you're in competition with so-and-so. And I'm like, I don't really want to focus on so-and-so's career. I want to focus on my career. Uh, and so for better or worse, when you're a writer or when you're a creative who is fully making your own work, uh, it's up to you. It's down to you to get the, the words on the page and the page is finished. And mm. it, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. It's its own level of its own difficulty. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I, I really prefer it. Um, but yeah, I don't, but I still think it was hard to go over to writer. I think because of that level of responsibility, like it is, you know, it's on me if I meet this deadline, uh, like it's no one else's fault. It is all me. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Um, ooh, good question. When is your favorite time to write? Yeah. Do you rise with the sun? Do you write by moonlight? What What's it look like over there, Erin? Are, are you sitting with your dog? Like, tell us. <laughs> I I found my rhythm uh, like when it went before grad school and then when I wasn't in school. I like am a solid. I like working from three p.m. to eleven p.m. Three to eleven. That's my so late afternoon into the evening. That's when I'm like the most productive and all that. I get up, you know, relatively early to walk my dog, but it takes me, it takes my brain a while to like get going in the morning. So Yeah, me too. Me too. And it's so interesting because, so I am also a night person and I write also best in those hours. And it's so interesting because I just, you know, hosted um, Lisa Unger two hours ago and she was saying that, um, she, you know, that her a large part of a large theme of her book is genetic testing, um, like twenty three and Me, DNA mm -hmm. testing, and I was saying, yeah, I did it, and it told me I was, <laughs> I was a, I was a night person, correctly so, like it was yeah. right, was like you are a night person, you like salty foods over sweet, it's it, yeah. it was eerily accurate, and I really think. There's actually nothing you can do about it. it it's genetic, um, yeah. which is fascinating. Oh, Renee wants to know what kind of dog you have. Tell us about the <laughs> Yeah, it's my dog. Her name is Thisbe. She is a little Boston Terrier. So she has like little, she makes lots of little grunts and snorts and stuff and has little ears that just show all of her emotions. Yeah. <laughs> and how, what is the history of the name Thisbe? So Thisbe is a really deep Shakespeare reference. It is a uh, the name of the play that's performed by the Rude Mechanicals in Midsummer Night's Dream. It's the most excellent oh. tragedy of Pyramus and Thisbe. Oh my God, I love it, Renee. So she sounds adorable. I know we need maybe. How about this, Erin? When you come back for book two, Thisbe can be your co-pilot, like on a little yeah, school. your co-host. Yeah, she. I was. She's. She's off taking a nap right now. But yeah, usually she would be like under me and usually randomly when I talk you would hear little grunts and snorts and I'm like that's in right because their noses are smushed so they are very yeah. like snorty grunty yeah she's very vocal even when she doesn't mean to be it's really sweet <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay so when you come back next year I'll have Pelu right here and you have yes. Thisbe and it'll be the four of us oh my god yes. okay who's in for that who's perfect. in for that oh oh what a perfect note to end on I love this I love this question how are you gonna how did you celebrate finishing your book so I remember oh yes I remember I finished I did final delivery uh like I, I got up with the sun finished reading the last act for the like the up tenth time uh and then I uh sent it to my editor and then I live near um milk bar <laughs> And so I went, I went to milk bar and I got some milk bar pie. I don't know what's in, I don't want to know what's in that pie. It is just delicious. Uh, and I got some, a slice of milk bar pie and the like cereal ice cream and uh, just like ate that in the park uh, with my dog right after I hit send on that email. So that's how I nice. celebrated. Yes. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. So you, you rose with the sun and you ate breakfast for, for ice cream. <laughs> Yeah, I ice cream I, for breakfast. Ice cream for breakfast, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. I love it. That sounds um, with Fisbee. Yes. yes. Okay, I absolutely love it. That sounds so good. Um, 
that thank you for the fabulous question renee you had amazing questions you should be doing interviews these are such fun questions um which led us to really great answers oh and renee shank she likes the idea of the four of us and our two dogs hosting <laughs> awesome great. renee you're in for next for next year okay um all right you guys i just want to remind you enter the giveaway erin will write something quote weird and exciting um, please post what she shares because now I want to know. I know I'm not going to get to see that. So enter to win. Um, and again, remember, weird and exciting. So hop over to Mystery and Thriller Mavens um, and enter to win. And then and then you can request your own weird and exciting or you can have Erin's weird and exciting. The weird and exciting is up to you. Yes. All right, y'all, that is a wrap on this Mystery Monday, Mystery and Thriller Mavens, Mystery Monday, Halloween extravaganza, closing out with the incredible Erin E. Adams, author of the debut novel, Jackal. Erin, thank you so much for coming in to chat with us, um, giving us the skinny. Thank you to all of you, um, many of whom spent the entire day with me doing back-to-back -back interviews. Um, so great to have you, and I will see you next week. Have a great night. Yeah, have a good evening, everyone. Thank you.